It's not very often when I get to take a look at a distribution before it appears on DistroWatch. The developer contacted me and let me know that this just came out. I'm speaking about Linux Lite version 106, and we're going to look at that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. One thing I like about this distribution is the fact that this is very VirtualBox friendly. I wish more developers would make their distributions VirtualBox friendly because this is how I like to test distributions before I'll even try it out on actual hardware. If we look at the lower right corner of the screen, you will see that there is the time, a volume control, a battery indicator where you can also adjust your power settings, a network applet, and in this version, this uses NM applet instead of Wicked, or WICD, as some of you may call it. You also have a desktop switcher, which will let you switch between the two different desktops that are available, but you can make it as many as you want. On the lower left corner of the screen, you have quick access to your terminal. The Thunar File Manager, which now has a new function, you can right-click and open uh, an item as root. Very handy. You also get the Firefox web browser, and you can minimize all windows and show the desktop. The Linux distro community submitted a number of wallpapers to give this some extra pizzazz. Right-clicking on the desktop and selecting Desktop Settings will show you you have a number of them to choose from, and all of these were community submitted. And some of these are very, very nice to look at. There's the one I created. Okay, let's have a look at the menu. You can easily run a program. Help and support. Let's have a look at this. This is the new user guide, and it has been updated. The nice thing about this is the user guide always updates when you update your system. How cool is that? Gives you uh, pictures along with text, and it's all written out in such a way that it's very easy for somebody new uh, from Windows or another operating system coming over to Linux would be able to understand and put this guide to good use. Gives you a uh, simple installation instructions, configuring your network, your software, and your hardware. All nicely laid out. Installing updates is easy. Just click this icon once a week, and this will go online, and it will download and install those updates for you. In settings, you can use the settings manager, or you can access everything individually. Personally, I like the Settings Manager because then, you know, I can maybe pick uh, how I want to change the, this appearance, maybe change the icons, that sort of thing, and then go back into the overview and chase, change something else. But you can change. There's a number of themes already available for this, but this supports GTK3 theming. So, you could go on gnomelook.org and get some of the latest themes and they'll look magnificent on this. You can change your icons, your fonts, and all of your settings. You even have window manager tweaks where you can add some eye candy. Turn on that compositor. You can add shadows and even transparencies. Pretty neat, huh? In accessories, you get an application finder, calculator, home folder, screenshot, terminal, text editor, and a file roller for compressing and uncompressing most file formats. Linux Lite was built with gaming in mind. Baltim, the developer, is a gamer, so he included links to the Humble Bundle website where you can purchase games, and they always got games on sale where you define the price 
and then you can download the game and uh, install them. A lot of times these games have Steam keys, so Steam is also included. And the thing is, Steam is always bringing new titles to the Linux platform, I'd like to say more than once a week. It's amazing to see how many games have uh, you know, surfaced since I started using Steam. Also, Steam driver information is available to you. In graphics, you get the GIMP, an image viewer and a scanner. You get uh, the Firefox web browser and internet, Mumble voice chat. And by the way, when this opens up, this will take you directly to the Linux distro community where you can get live voice chat with uh, other people who are using this distribution. Let me open this up real quick for you and show you how that works. You can see the Linux distro community is already here and we can select connect. Okay, and it looks like I'm in with the lobby bot right now. I have the audio turned off so that you can't hear everything, but it's playing music and giving its normal welcome message. XChat IRC is also pretty cool because this will log you into Freenode and then it assigns you a name if you don't create one for yourself. And then it puts you into the Linux distro community room. Usually when I'm in here, you'll see my name and I'm up here in the uh, yellow area. And then of course the Linux light room. And there are people in there as well. In multimedia, you get a CD, DVD burner, and this is XF Burn, probably one of the best lightweight disc burners I have ever used, so glad to see that it's in here. An audio mixer, the Pulse Audio Volume Control, and VLC Media Player. In Office, you get the free LibreOffice Suite, as well as a PDF viewer. And in System, the cat's meow. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up to the top here. You get a Task Manager, System Information. Resource usage, printing, a drive partitioner, namely Gparted. You get an NTFS configuration tool, great for those of you who are dual booting your computers. A log file viewer. Uh, you get the Synaptic Package Manager. Let's go ahead and open this up. If you do not wish to use the update script, you can actually use this. Just select Mark All Upgrades and select Mark and then apply afterwards to install them. I'm not going to do that right now. But I can see that it looks like there's already a new kernel upgrade for this. Also, you can use the Synaptic Package Manager for installing other games or utilities. But to make that even easier for you, you have install additional software. Now these are meta packages which will allow you to install, install some extra utilities on your system that were not bundled in with this live disk. So you can install file and folder search. You can install an instant messaging software. An iPod manager, great for those of you who have mobile devices. Remote desktop. Restricted Extras. This will let you get those multimedia files that won't play working. You can install BitTorrent software. Probably the fastest way to download things off the internet these days, so I recommend getting one. Uh, video editing software. Virtual Box. A weather monitor. Or you can also install the Wine Meta Package, which will install everything you need to get those Windows programs and games running natively under Linux. Now, it won't run everything. It's kind of hit or miss. Another neat feature in this that caught my eye that is brand new, this enables you to enable auto login or disable it. How cool is that? Usually you have to dig around to figure out how to make those changes, and this is included here for you. Okay, you can also edit networking shares, restart networking share services, and create a system report. Okay, I covered most of the changes that this offers, uh, but I do want to mention that this is a 32-bit operating system. There are no plans for making a 64-bit edition, but this does contain a PAE kernel which will allow you to use more than four gigs of RAM if you have that installed on your system. Now, some things I did not mention is this does have 
Bluetooth support now. This also has scanner support and support for your iPhone or other iDevices. There is a new login screen which gives you additional functionality over the, its previous release. And of course, now they have a place where you can get Linux-like goodies such as stickers and t-shirts and other fun things. So you might want to vis visit the Linux Lite shop. All in all, Voltam, you did an awesome job on this. And in my next episode, we're going to install a software center on this. Good job. Mm -hmm.